The Howard Center Arts Collective is a community of artists, a collective or a community of artists. We all have uh, mental health and or substance use challenges, either um, via our direct experience with these challenges or through a family member, a friend, or through our work. So we had a couple of visits um, early this year with the Howard Center Arts Collective group where they came, walked through the galleries, and they came up with a list of objects from the collections that they wanted to see. We had amazing conversations in our spaces about the artwork that they'd chosen. And then they went off to, to create their pieces, and now I'm getting to see the pieces they created. I can't wait to have more conversations with them about their artwork. I went through the collection, the whole American collection, could not settle on what I wanted to choose. I picked this enlistment poster from the archives of the Fleming. I knew right away I wanted to do this because I'm an activist with my artwork. And I thought, huh, I'm going to change this up. It's war, I'm doing peace. It's guys, I'm doing women. I love the fact that they're all over the world. I was crying when I read some of the stuff that these women have done. It's just amazing, you know? Our goal as a collective is really to um, provide opportunities to connect as a community, to create art together, and to um, provide opportunities to exhibit our art to the community. I think one of the really unique um, aspects of the show is um, well, basically the title, Call and Response. We've looked at pieces from the Fleming and that we were called to, and we've responded with our own interpretation, our own, um, our own response to, to what we saw, um, where we saw meaning in those pieces. It's a sketch. It's a sketch for a mural that was made in Brooklyn, uh, New York, uh, in a hospital during the 30s. It inspired me because it made me think of the progression of medical science and the history of medical science and just the many trial and errors. On the top scene, I actually have a, some kind of surgery taking place up here. They start off as uh, cutouts way in the back. That's like the first layer. And I just build, build upon it with each layer. I wanted to do something about um, white privilege. And this um, made me feel like it was a shattered portrait. And I, I saw I, the title of the piece that I'm working on is called A Shattered Fragility. And it's a portrait of, of Henry Perkins, who was the uh, director of the Fleming. He was a eugenicist and um, you know, I, I felt like, you know, he was a eugenicist because he's frail, <laughs> right? If, if anybody I could think of to like shatter their fragility, it would, it would be him or myself. So it, with that in mind, I, there's a mirror underneath of here so that whoever looks at this portrait of this guy Perkins is also gonna look at their own portrait as well. One of the initial themes we were talking about, again, in this space with other artworks surrounding us was transformation. Because we've been talking about the reckonings and transformations at the Fleming Museum itself, and people were talking about the transformations they were feeling in their own lives, whether because of the pandemic or racial justice or just living. My name is Rafad Amjad. Uh, I'm 23 years old. I, uh, I'm from Iraq. I left Iraq because it's dangerous there. Before we coming here, we was live in Turkey. I chose this painting because it's similar my life or story. I try to, to uh, draw hard story, uh, like how two people left from uh, their country to safety place. I draw this painting with the acrylic color, and then I changed the uh, background to uh, like middle night. I'm really happy to share my painting with the other artists. I 
ينظرون بين الرسم هو حرام لكن هو الرسم مو مو حرام يعني. لما قريت عن الفنان جاك، الفنان جاك كان يجسد الحروب ذاك الوقت. فعرفت بان نفسي يعني انا كفنان لازم أن ادي رسالتي بالصوره الصحيحه بما يخدم بلدي ويخدم المجتمع. وهذه الحمامات انها ترسل رسالات سلام الى كل العالم. يعني تبلغ العالم باجمع باحنا ناس نريد نعيش بحب نعيش بسلام. I chose this little cricket box. It goes back to a practice of keeping lucky crickets. And I was reminded of somebody who used to tell me about the lucky crickets and how much that person was a support to me when I was reaching a culmination in my mental health to a point where I could no longer maintain it myself. So I decided to make a house and I wanted to be a place where the lucky cricket could replenish its luck. I also, with this piece, was exploring different aspects of my own identity, and I incorporated, for the first time ever in my work, uh, porcupine quills. I wanted to incorporate the porcupine quills because I myself am Mohawk. I'm mostly Caucasian, but I'm also Mohawk, and I don't know how much because of the eugenics program because my family wouldn't talk about it, besides to confirm that we were, basically so that I would know to keep quiet about it, because that was the generation that my grandmother came from, where it wasn't, it wasn't safe to talk about. Well, this piece is called Tree Road Mountains. I just loved the abstract of the trees and the color, the color scheme, the different shades of green, and I love the sky. What it brought back were the memories of climbing Mount Mansfield when I was a uh, youngster and looking at all these trees. And I haven't done that in years and I wish I could. Right now I'm on a sky kick. I selected um, this beautiful painting called Figures on Beach with Balloons by Theodore Polos. I like his mixture of the colors and the graying, and he's not afraid to use mud, and he's not afraid to um, cr um, take mistakes and um, turn them into art. I like how Theodore used a wide perspective of the sparse environment and the wide energy that takes place at the beach, so I wanted to explore that space and wideness, and not and, and without being afraid of what colors I used, or like not being afraid of what marks I made. I was flipping through the, the artwork, and I got to that sketch, and I stopped, because it immediately made me think of a sketch I had come across of my mother's. She wanted to be a fashion designer, and she was quite talented, but she had given it up for the six kids she had. And I was going to get back to her art when the kids were grown, but she passed when we were children, so that never happened. I found with the, the five women faces that I used as an inspiration represented that time period in America, and I wanted to re represent what I see as America today. And I thought about all the people I knew and saw every day. And I thought about society right now. I thought about the issues we're having with race, with DACA, with the, this country. In many ways, this exhibition and being here at the Fleming is really a culmination of um, our exhibitions over the last several years. And I think that's had an, a big impact on our artists. I have watched them over the course of the last several months putting an incredible amount of effort into their particular piece, their creation for this show. I have learned to let, let the painting tell me where it's supposed to go, that flaws are to be expected and endorsed and, and sometimes embraced. I have two things I've learned about myself, I guess. I, I just my perfectionism really came out and, um, and my patience uh, grew. I make art because it keeps me sane, I believe. <laughs> um, you know, it gets me through life. <laughs>